Ship Live at the Public Theater. Sting is here with us, as is the lead of the upcoming musical, The Last Ship. Please welcome Jimmy Nail. Hi, Jimmy. So tell us about your friendship, the two of you. It's platonic. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it goes back, uh, I guess it goes back about 40 years, isn't it? It does. We're from the same town. Yeah, yeah. So you grew up together? No, 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 no. <laughs> well. No, we, we, uh, we were both playing in local bands at the same time in the 70s. Uh, so we kind of, you know, we, we, we were in the same vicinity. And then uh, we became pals about 30 years ago, proper pals. <laughs> and uh, we've been on the last ship together. For th over three years? I would say four. Mm. You would, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you would. <laughs> uh, but it's been fantastic. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. People are saying, Jimmy, that you are Sting's muse. How do you feel about that? I'm coming to terms with it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called many things worse than that, so I'll take news. That's all right. No, it's, it's actually, it's a lovely thing. It's a compliment to think if I played a small part in helping him to get this towards where it needs to go, I'm, I'm thrilled. Right. Mm. You were telling us an interesting story in the commercial break that Sting actually does not want you to tell this story, but now I'm super curious as well as our audience. <laughs> tell us something about oh, him that we don't know that he won't you tell know us. You were asking him about being a teacher. Uh -huh. uh, it just tells you something about him as a guy. Um, they did a, a program on UK, to, on the BBC recently where Sting was on, and unbeknownst to Sting, they traced some of his former pupils, and they had, well, all obvious grown up now, they had a guy on, and they said, can you tell us about Mr. Sumner, the teacher? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I can tell you this, that when I was at school, I was very, very poor, and I didn't have, my family didn't have the money, uh, we couldn't afford sneakers, so I couldn't do any um, games or sport. And Mr. Sumner found out, so out of his own pocket, Mr. Sumner bought me some sneakers. Aww. Wow. So I just thought it says a lot about my pal as a geezer. Yes, your pal. Nice. <laughs> see, see, Sting, you thought that was going to be a bad story. It was a very endearing story. It's nice. It's nice to hear that. You had to pay me back eventually, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're still just trying to collect. <laughs> now, uh, now, why was Jimmy so important in this process, and, and was he the, one of the first guys that you reached out to? I was the cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I started writing, the, 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 the character I was writing about was a, a foreman of the shipyard. They were very tough, upright guys with an amazing sense of dignity. And my friend Jimmy just fit that bill completely, and I, I, I couldn't have done it without him. So I had someone to write, so a real person person to write for, to give words to, to give melody to. And that was so, so useful. So he's been with me the whole way. He's been my shadow the whole way. Right. And a guy that can relate to the town. I mean, it's living. Well, I used to be an engineer. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I served an apprenticeship as a welder. Um, I left school at 15 and did four or five years welding. So I, I this isn't a sort of um, an imaginary thing for me. It's, uh, I know the I know these characters. I know the real people behind the characters. Mm -hmm. Now, G has been monitoring our Facebook, yes. and she actually has a message in a yes, bottle. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> special, special delivery today. Ooh, all right. Well, okay. Yikes. What do you got? <laughs> all right. All right. This is from Evie, and she wants to know for Sting, what song has the most meaning for you? Ooh. The most song in my life or in the show? I think both. Um, I answered this, a question like that last night. Um, there's a song called Dead Man's Boots where I talk I about the relationship, a difficult relationship between a father and a son where a father's love is kind of misconstrued as being controlling mm -hmm. and bullying and where a, a son's ambition seems pie in the sky fantasy. So that tension is there and it was, it was part of, of my life. My dad could never quite grasp that I had a real job. <laughs> of course I don't. <laughs> but uh, you know, we never quite resolve the, those issues oh. and so it's an important and emotional song for me. And mm. then overall in your career, if you had one... My just... favorite song? Oh. I think it's all one song. You oh. know, it's, it's one long like song and it's kind of a, a three-dimensional world. Oh, really? mm -hmm. I'm feeling a little free, free, <laughs> set me free. <laughs> Them free. Free, free, free. Set them free. Free. Go to break, Ryan. All right, now the two of them. Uh, I think Set she might be with Sting and Paul Simon tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Sting, so much, and all the best of luck. Jimmy. Thank you. Pleasure.
Make sure you check out The Last Chip when it premieres at the Bank of America Theater on June 10th. We'll be there. We'll be right back. <laughs>